Hey, what is going on everybody? I hope you're enjoying the back of your New Year's holidays and had an awesome time. In today's video, I want to go over something a lot of people are probably asking themselves, and that's what the heck is going to be Jubilee's unlock requirements? Uh, we're kind of assuming that she's going to be released in the next patch in 5.1 and there's been very little known about her really which is surprising in some ways but they did have this extended hiatus over the holidays in terms of blog posts so I hope that this does get confirmed with at least some time in between before her release. I want to go over some of the potential combination of characters that pop out at me that could be used for her release and how likely they may be and there's a couple that I have been thinking about lately particularly. So without further ado, let's get this speculation started. Alright, so we're going to start this off nice and easy with the Pym Tech. Now this was the team suggested uh, for Jubilee and that's what a lot of people are kind of expecting it to be. This is the new team that was made last patch uh, and it does kind of follow that format, that legendary format of three, uh, two, in this, sorry, in this case two previously farmable characters, so that's Ant-Man and the Wasp, alongside three newer characters and that's Ghost, Stature, and Yellow Jacket. Now Stature of course was the event campaign character for the patch, uh, Yellow Jacket was a Blitz uh, 45 shot unlock and then Ghost was a 100 shot unlock Blitz. Now this do normally follows the same pattern as say characters like Black Bolt who was uh, also from an Asgardian perspective there was one event campaign character and that was Heimdall I'm pretty sure and then there were two Blitzes in the form of Sif and Hela and then we also had Ebony Maw who also follow the same exact order as well. Now, uh, the only problem with this, of course, is none of them are farmable at this point. Yellow Jacket, Stature, and Ghost specifically aren't farmable. They are in the orbs, uh, but in terms of being able to get them ready for Jubilee, who knows? Uh, the only reason why I'm a bit skeptical about Pimtech, it does follow that exact sort of formula. Same with um, Doc Ock. I forgot to mention Doc Ock for X Force. You know, they did make them farmable before the event. The only reason why I'm skeptical about this particularly is because of how good Ghost is in Dark Dimension. So I, I don't know if the Pimtech exactly flopped as a team. But we do know that Ghost is super powerful, hence why I have her at T14, uh, and I will be taking her into Tier 15 as well. So she really has she has her merits in Dark Dimension way more than the other characters are. But I don't know if they want to make a team like this farmable, because then that'll make characters like Ghost a lot easier to build up. Uh, a character who is a combination of Minerva and Yo-Yo with her passive, which is going to make characters make players a lot easier to get through Dark Dimension. So for this reason, I'm not sure if this is what is actually going to end up being. It it highly possibly could. Uh, as you can see, I have almost all of them at 5 star, except for Yellow Jacket, who was 104 to 130. I didn't press as hard as I would have liked in Blitz at that time, because only the first one was... Uh, sorry, only the second one was Blitz Sim, and the first one I didn't just... I didn't push hard enough at that time. So, uh, whether or not Pimtech actually ends up being the Jubilee Unlock requirement, even though it does follow that same formula that we normally get, uh, we'll have to wait and see until we get some more further information on whether or not that's true or not. So, uh, let's move on to my second guess. Alright, so I'm going to get this out of the way early as well, because again, I'm not too sure how likely this is going to be. Now, this is the skill military list of characters. Uh, I'm putting this here because they are characters that are going to be releasing uh, pretty soon, and it does, I wouldn't say follows the exact formula, but now instead is slightly reversed. So there are three former characters, Merc Soldier, Punisher, Killmonger, and then we have Yelena Belova, who is going to be a 45 shard Blitz character, which is coming pretty soon actually, uh, coming up on Thursday. And then we have Red Guardian, who is going to be an event character with his own event. I believe it's going to be very similar to the Anti-Venom event. Uh, yeah, I don't know how likely this is going to be. It does at the very least have a Blitz character. A lot of the legendary characters do tend to have a blitz character within their set of five that being because it's a lot harder to get five star for blitz characters if you don't buy offers for them so even if you were to say uh, not buy the offers 
theoretically, and then you uh, got 100 shards twice on Yelena, that would still not get you 5 stars. So for free-to-play players, that still is a challenge to get 5 star on Bliss-type characters. On the other hand, Red Guardian is an event character, very likely to at least be able to get a 4 star free-to-play. Uh, and so it does provide that element of needing to pay if you want to get all the way to that 5 star. It is very tough to get 5 star new releases if you don't spend any money at all. At the very least, you would have to spend power cores to get an extra couple of shards or whatever you need to get for a blitz type character to 5 star. So I'm going to put this here. Again, I don't know how likely this is going to be, but this is one that has been speculated, at least on my Discord channel and uh, through some of the people that I have been chatting with. So I wanted to bring this up here in the video. So this is skill military, uh, specifically going to be Red Guardian and Yelena that you'll want to look at. Uh, you know, maybe some people might lack merc Mercenary Soldier, but, uh, you know, I don't, so <laughs> uh, we'll see about that one. So let's move on to the third one. Okay, and so this is where we get into some more sketchy requirements. Uh, this is kind of going the route of uh, Phoenix, where they had Villain Mystic Controller. This one has been tooted uh, in the past before, and uh, there have been other people who have also uh, suggested this. So this is the Villain Bio Controller set of tags, and we would have to disclude, disinclude uh, the minions, Kree Noble and Aim Infector here. So uh, the five that are on this list. Graviton, Venom, Scream, Swarm, and Red Skull. Now, when people were suggesting this prior, Red Skull uh, was not farmable. Graviton was only in the War Store. So now we have Graviton in Doom War Chapter 3, uh, 3, 6. And now Red Skull took the place of Thor in Doom War 1, 6. Uh, Swarm, we do know, is going to be farmable in the Arena Store. I'm guessing probably on Wednesday, I suppose. We should probably see him there. He will be the farmable character for the beginning of January. I actually thought he was going to be farmable a bit sooner than that. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, we're having to wait for the beginning of January, that first Wednesday of the month. Uh, so the only character on this list that isn't farmable is Scream. Now, she was a campaign event character during the Symbiotes patch, so this kind of leaves it with four characters that are farmable now, one that's not. This is possible. Uh, if they disincluded uh, Kree, Noble, and Aim Infector, they could make Scream farmable within the next month. It's just that on the list of characters that I've seen that needs to become farmable is Beast, and I believe after Beast it is... Um, uh, no, we have Squirrel. Actually, it might be Scream. We might be going into the Symbiote's patch now in terms of farmability. So this might be possible, and that's if they're going to be making all five of the characters farmable beforehand. Uh, this could be something to note, and the reason why I'm suggesting this is because Graviton was recently made farmable in Doom War 3.6, and from previous events, so for Doc Ock, we had one of the harder farms that needed to be done was Negasonic on Doom War 1.9, and then his release, Doc Ock's release, came subsequent after that. Of course, the real lock came to be from uh, people who needed X-23 shards from the War Store, but now it seems to be there's... This would be a weird one because there'd be twice as many ways to get shards for Graviton, both in the War Store if you really wanted to, uh, and through the Node Farm. But I think we really need to keep an eye and take a look at the characters that are on Doom War Chapter 2 and 3 and kind of come up with a, a way to include them possibly in these unlock requirements. And that's what I tried to do here. Uh, but my last and final combination of characters are kind of going to bring all that together. So let's look at that and find out. Okay, and this last set of characters, this is might be really stretching it, but I do, please hear me out on this one here. So, my first set of tags is Villain Skill Controller. Now, this isn't going to be the only ones. This is actually one of two sets of tags that I think that create five characters that I think could have some merit. Now, we know, of course, Taskmaster was made farmable recently in Doom War 3.9. That is the hardest uh, campaign node in the, P I guess, in the campaigns so far. And so he was recently made farmable. I only have about five star even though he was a campaign event you know it was very difficult to get shards for him so this is villain skill controller we recently had baron zemo in the real-time arena season that's still ongoing but it's just about to end uh, so there was anywhere from 45 to 100 shards available for him there uh, depending on how well you did in the real-time arena season uh, and uh, he was also a 100 shard blitz character now proxima midnight was of course a campaign event way back when but she was more recently farmable in doom 
more chapter 29 and she is a villain skill controller as well so this is three characters here that could be and the reason why I bring these up because specifically Taskmaster and Proxima were new characters at the end of Doom War 2 and Doom War 3 and so I really want to bring mention to these characters because like I said Negasonic was used in the unlock for Doc Ock and she was at the end of Doom War 1 9 which is was the uh, the highest sort of campaign event at that time and so where are we now we're at Doom War 2 and 3 but 3 specifically the end character is Taskmaster and I was looking at Taskmaster's uh, traits villain global skill controller and that's where I came up with villain skill controller now I looked at global you know I tried to do some combination of global I don't think they've ever used things like that they've never used city global or cosmic as far as I'm aware however the next set of characters are going to be interesting and you might think this is crazy too uh, we're, <laughs> we're gonna go do it so first of all it's gonna be bio and then it's city and then support and you get two characters and these are also two newer characters and you get squirrel girl and anti-venom so squirrel girl is farmable in uh, doom war 2 6 so that was in chapter 2 alongside Proxima Midnight and then we have Anti-Venom who currently isn't farmable. Uh, now he did have of course that event that came around and that was uh, most people got him I would say at least a 3 or 4 star uh, but he hasn't come back around for anything else yet and isn't farmable right now. Now I'm highly speculating he could possibly be the next character for the Mojo's or Real Time Arena season. Uh, obviously we don't know that yet and we will know probably within a week when that comes to the next season and whether or not he's going to be the next character in there and I think if he is in there that might kind of raise a flag with me that both Zemo and Anti-Venom to some degree might be usable in the next legendary event. Uh, this is, I know this is really left field because I, I said that there was no, or right field or whatever we want to say, and because I, I mentioned that there was no tags that were ever used in a legendary event that specified city, uh, global or cosmic other than you know the block party event which was specific to city city hero characters uh, so this is a bit you know a bit out there but there's two characters here plus the three previously mentioned from uh, villain skill controllers and that makes a set of five characters a lot of them are newer uh, but some of them are farmable so squirrel girl is farmable proxima is farmable and taskmaster is farmable of the three out of five characters and then we have anti-venom and baron zemo who aren't farmable so i could see people struggling to get shards with those if they haven't worked on them if they didn't blitz for them hard enough or if they didn't do the event in the case of anti-venom so uh that's something i wanted to bring up here and specifically again like i said it's because i kind of want to draw attention to do more one which is what negasonic was for one nine which was required for doc ock and then going back if you look at say ebony ma you also needed karnak who was at the end of nexus eight wow not the end of nexus eight but he was at eight six and so you needed karnak in order to get ebony ma so this does suggest that the more recent campaign events could possibly be used to unlock legendary characters so i'm not saying this is what it's going to be but i think that this has some potential here i know it's pretty crazy of a suggestion for these five characters but uh they are newer characters they are harder to come by you would probably have to pay for them uh, to get shards for a lot of these so in terms of monetary financial gain for scopely this would probably get them that uh but let me know what you guys think about my suggestions let me know if there's something that i didn't mention something that i should have mentioned uh, if there's any combination of characters that you guys have been thinking about uh that might possibly unlock jubilee because honestly i think we really need to find out soon uh but i'm wondering if it might be any of these who knows maybe it just might be pemtech and they might make it easy like that and you know it's nothing crazy to, to this degree like what i'm suggesting but uh we'll have to wait and see of course like everything and uh hopefully in the next blog post which i guess is in two weeks uh, i don't even i think i was told that the next blog post is friday january the 15th so that's some time away but hopefully we'll learn everything there or at least uh, what we need to know for the upcoming characters so uh that's the end of this video guys and let me know if i'm crazy or not <laughs> but otherwise uh until next time stay safe and i'll see y'all later boylan signing out